yeah, Eagle Feather uh, and the flute that I flew and the arrowhead, there were two. There was an arrowhead that I, my aunt uh, in Bartlesville, Oklahoma had found on the lake bed and she has that. My dad has an archaic dart point that I flew for him. He has that and he was going to hopefully go in a museum in Texas. The Eagle Feather and the flute are in the uh, Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. In fact, a Yaqui Indian, a guy, uh, Dr. Ed Galindo, was one of my committee members on my, um, my PhD program. He had actually done work with students on the Duck Valley Reservation, and it was following a NASA summer program. And so what I did is I evaluated the tests they took before and after that summer program, and I, I did a quantitative analysis of it, and I looked to see if any of the students had a change in their interest in math and science. And the interesting part was girls. The, there were three girls that actually showed an interest, increased interest. Um, <coughs> then I also did a case study and I interviewed the students about three years later to find out well, what was the factors that motivated them. It was anything about that program, not just that, but in, in general. Uh, interesting thing that came out of it was uh, auntie, sisters, grandmas, you know, the maternal component in their family, they could tell me that was the person that was the, the prime motivator in their family. And it was interesting because there's some data, there's, there's some data I've read that uh, from other native tribes where they identified as a maternal component, you know, based on lineage that, uh, that they found as the driver. And uh, hands-on learning, you know, was, I, to make stuff with their hands and to tie the theoretical to the practical is essentially what uh, it, it, you know, it's, it gets them motivated to want to study. You know, as a matter of fact, I gave a talk once at, in, uh, in Salee up at Diné College, and the Bowman family, uh, Clarissa and Claretta Bowman, they asked her grandma if, if an astronaut could come speak. And she goes, well, is he, is he, is he Diné? Is he Navajo? And she goes, no, he's Chickasaw. He says, well, as long as his tribe's okay with it, we're okay with it. That's what they said, but yeah. So have you encountered any other tribes that were anti-flying into space? No, I think just the Navajo, just in terms of, one of the, a couple other issues dealt with, uh, there was a, a mission that went to the moon, and they were concerned about it. I got a call one day at my office at NASA, said, John, how do we address this? The Navajo Nation's upset that this, this, um, this um, uh, program's going to the moon. And I said, well, just have a dialogue. I mean, you know, just accept what, and, and talk to them about what their belief is, and don't belittle their belief, and, and say this is, we understand, you know, your, your concerns, and just have that dialogue. And it was, it was interesting to get that phone call, and I was glad I could participate in that discussion. Um, I like to think my ancestors, you know, I'm here because my ancestors made it possible for me to be here. And if whatever I do uh, honors them and whatever I, I have from that part, both sides of my family, that makes a difference in who I am as a person and that I honor my heritage in that manner. Um, you know, we all have to, as they say, walk in two worlds. Uh, you know, I didn't grow up in a traditional environment where I was you know, always speaking the language. My great grandmother spoke the language but wouldn't speak it to anybody except people her own age. But it, it was at that time, that time in history. Always been very proud of the fact I'm Chickasaw and very proud of what, you know, that I get to walk the earth that you know, my ancestors made it possible. Uh, you know, my grandfather was born right at the turn of the century, right after the Wright brothers flew. And then, you know, by the time he had, par he had died, you know, his grandson had, was, uh, was going to fly in space. And so there's a, that's quite a, a broad brush in, in technology that uh, we've had a chance to participate in. And my mom remembered being right at the runway, you know, when I landed, and she knew exactly that anticipation, what it felt like. It was really, I think it was really devastating for my mom, too. You know, they're my friends, three of my classmates, seven were friends, you know, and, and then you have to go, you have to go work the program and to see really, to see what happened. So, uh, yeah, it, it hurt, uh, you know, it was a really, that was a very tough period of time, I no doubt, yeah. How much time do you have? <laughs> uh, yeah, really it was bad. it was certainly you know it was very important because there's two s there's two systems two trusses on the space station that cool the space station, okay, 
ours, you know, was the first one on the left side. The one on the right side had gone up about two flights, about a flight before ours. Well, interesting thing was that one's failed twice. That system has failed twice, and that really essentially cuts off half of the cooling power of the space station. So you actually have to shut off half the power. Ours is still working. Yay, you know. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a very essential part. If it wasn't there, they couldn't they couldn't do the work they do. Second question was. Did you encounter any problems when you did the E-rays? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, my own, I made a mistake. I took out the wrong tool once. Uh, the neat thing about that was I figured it out hanging in the vastness of space, realizing that I could do the exact same task I'd been trained to do with something else with what I had. And so, you know, common sense, quick thinking, telling, telling Houston what I wanted to do, getting their approval, and I was able to fix something that I'd made a mistake on. That was fabulous feeling. Also, the, there was a time when uh, uh, part of the this cart going down the front of space station I was stuck. And I thought, I was worried, if, was it me? Uh, was it my par spacewalking partner? It actually was two pieces of the space station that actually uh, interfered with e each other. The problem was it prevented me from doing my job on the robotic arm. And so I had to do something whole and completely different I wasn't trained to do with a hand and, a, and one hand hanging on the entire time and using the other hand to do all the, the work. So, and that was all done successfully. So it felt, it felt pretty darn good. The, the Chickasaw Nation has it, and uh, they're the ones responsible for releasing that. So when they decide to release it, then oh, so it'll be No, they don't think they have it. Yeah. No. Uh, do you think we are going to release it? I hope it? so. I hope so. It's a beautiful. We had a, uh, with uh, the director, uh, was an Emmy Award winning director. The producer produced all the Godfather movies and Apocalypse Now. So we had quite the, quite the team to do it. But the tribe has the, uh, has the uh, rights to it, and they'll decide when they want to release it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, that's all my questions. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. I appreciate Thank you. it. It's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too.